In this video, we're gonna show you the things that you wanna do when you're in Jodhpur, also known as the blue city of Rajasthan. April's about done with India. <laughs> Today's been a crappy day. I don't feel good. And I've been pushed past my limits with Thanks for joining us on another journey. We're in Jodhpur, also known as the Blue City. If you're new to the channel, this is April, and I'm Wayne, so hit that subscribe button and smash that bell. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Jodhpur is the second largest city in Rajasthan. It's a great place if you're doing a road trip to stop because it's a long drive from Udaipur to Jodhpur. We suggest, you know, one or two days in Jodhpur. Fun fact, the 1994 movie, Jungle Book, was filmed in Jodhpur. Such a cool movie. I don't know if you've seen it in Jungle Book, but go back and, and find a streaming service and watch it. It's fun. I watched it a lot with my daughter when she was growing up. It's called Meheran Gad. Meher means sun, Gad means folk. Well, that's difficult. <laughs> that is a big, big, tall fort. Started the fort 1459. They have a separate male entrance and female entrance. So that is not the main gate of the fort. The original main gate is the old city. We're off to the Blue City now. Good fort is actually known for several different things. It's known as the Blue City. And Gateway to the Tar. That's what we're doing next, the Tar Desert. We're riding camels. There's multiple stories as to the blue color of the city. Yeah, they say Lord Jiva drank some deadly poison, which basically spread throughout his whole body and turning his body blue. When they're making the city blue, it's for a couple of reasons. One, it keeps the temperature when it's extremely hot outside. It actually keeps the temperature down about 10 degrees. And they also put herbs and spices in, in the blue paint to keep the mosquitoes away. If you're invited into a local family's house, make sure you take your shoes off before you come inside. Namaste. 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 More than 300 years. Wow. Those are some big stairs. <laughs> Go for it, April. <laughs> like mountain climbing. Oh, wow. You can see the fort from here very well. Oh, I see why it's called the Blue City now. So much blue. So has this house been in your family for a long time? Yes. Same uh, same family been 300 years. Wow. wow that's Normally, great. people do not sell their houses. They pass on to generous and to generous. Sure, yeah. sure. And the house I live, that is almost 250 years old. And that is, um, I'm the fifth or sixth generation living in the same house. Wow. The fort was here way before these okay. houses were here. So Some people... houses were, they are as old as fort. Some are as old as the fort in the city, yes. okay. It's amazing that they are still standing. <laughs> well, they're solid block and brick. Wow. I mean, it's... Unless there's an earthquake, it's not going anywhere. Is that what they used way back then? Was yes, this... yes, same, same stone. That is the main entrance of the fort. You see the old domes? Small yes. Domes, yeah? This is the main entrance of the fort. That's the old gate? Yes. We can walk from here to that gate. Okay. And then we'll go through then and then we'll climb up through again a big alley of blue houses. It's interesting walking through the narrow alleyways. You can tell that this city is a very old city. We've walked back in time. They're using donkeys to actually pick up the garbage because the streets are so narrow that they can't get the trucks up. What were they yelling? Yeah, like old newspapers, old uh, iron stuffs or anything, they will buy. Buy? Recycle. They get paid to recycle? Yes. Oh. It's a business, big business in India. It's old. It's definitely not kept up. So sneaky. 
Indy is definitely sensory overload. I'm walking through the city and some things smell amazing. Sometimes it just smells like open soup. They do the local ironing. They're using Honey. coal and charcoal. You heat up the iron. You want to buy this house? You can get this for 15 million rupees. I'll put down on the how much 15 million rupees is. If you come to Jodhpur and you want to go see the Blue City, I can tell you this right now. <laughs> These little alleyways are confusing. You need a guide here. It will make it so much better. The alleyways here are so small in the Blue City that you can't have a car. You have to have a motor scooter. Or that's the only way in or out of here. Heck, we don't even see tuk-tuks. We walked all the way through the Blue City alleyways and now we're at the main entrance to the fort. Well, just like usual in India, I can't film anywhere, so we're not going to do the fort today. So to let you know, if you're a foreigner, it also costs 650 rupees to come to the fort. So if you are wanting to film and do things at your own pace, then I would highly suggest taking this one off the list. It's not worth the drive up here to find out that you can't use your camera. 650 rupees for a foreigner, it's nowhere near what they charge the locals. I always say whenever you get to a different country, you got to go to a local market because it's always chaotic. Sardar Market is located near the historic clock tower. That was crazy chaos. <laughs> it's a big market. Yes. I felt like we were walking in there for days. The British built the clock tower to symbolize the wholesale market here. Sardar, Sardar is the name of Maharaja, Sardar Singh. He built this one, therefore it's called Sardar Market. Lots of handicrafts to see and textiles. They sell everything from sweet goods to shoes, accounting books, which I thought was kind of unusual that the uh, the Indian people still use accounting books oh, yeah. and not computers. Anytime you're anywhere in India, and you want to try to purchase something as a foreigner, they're going to start at some crazy high price and you're going to have to negotiate your way down. It's part of the culture, so embrace it. You know, the one thing is a lot of times it upset us is they would start so high on a price that I just didn't even feel like negotiating. I'm like, so you want to charge me five times what I would pay for it in America? Yeah, it's like insulting. Like we're happy to negotiate and we want to help you, you know, feed your family, but I don't want you to rip me off Let's either. be reasonable. That was kind of the problem with even some of the tourist attractions where, you know, charging the foreign tourists sometimes six to ten times the amount of what the locals pay just because we're foreigners. It sells only ribbons, decorating clothes, kids' clothes, only turbans here. They wear the turban just for celebration, right? It has a lot of different purposes. It has and had multiple use. Those days when they used to go in a battlefield, they used to keep a steel plate inside, so it was working as a helmet. Oh, okay. Okay. Today, you find a bottle of water almost every step, wherever you want. Those days, they were traveling from one village to another village. There was no bottle of water. They would have looked for a well or step well. Where? Open the turban, tie a bowl, and pull the water and filter the other corner. If they had an accident, they would have tear a piece of material and would have used as a band-aid. During the travel, if they feel tired, they would have used as a pillow. Oh, so it's a Swiss Army knife from yeah, cut up. India. Yeah. <laughs> has and had a multiple use. Every shop has their own specialty. He sells plastic decorative items. Can you guess what is this? Come here. The spice. You can taste it. Oh, I don't like it. Remember when we tried it in Mexico? Yeah, I tried it in Mexico. Yes. Tamarind candy, remember? Oh. This doesn't taste like that. It starts getting, a, it starts doing a weird thing to your tongue. Tingles? Yeah, yeah, it's almost like uh, like it's dancing on your taste buds. What are these? What is that thing? That's a water chestnut. Yeah, I've never seen a water chestnut that one in its hand. Yeah. So you have to feel it. Yeah. There's no taste to candy, just water. Oh. oh. Um, it's better than the ones that we, I always had it in a can, I never had a real water chestnut. The, uh, it, it really doesn't have a flavor to it, but it, 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 it's way better than what you get in a can. Natural fresh. Yeah, I like it. That's really good. Nice and refreshing. These are specifically very famous for the gulab jamun and kitti ki chakki. Right, it's one of the best in India. We have the same face for 100 years. Okay. Do you want to try one? We'll try one. It's better than some of the others we've tried. Yeah. It's not as overly moist. Yeah, because the other ones, they, they drown in the liquid. And it's, it's not as like super sweet. 
So yeah, it's got a different texture to it as well. Yeah. The ones that we've had are all like drowned in sugar and all you taste is the sugar. This is good, I like this one. What is he making up? Same thing as the deepened wheat. Made with the only milk and sugar, that's it. Uh, milk and sugar. I, I always thought Americans liked a lot of sugar. Indian, way more sugar. <laughs> Just taste it. Did I just my mouth? Yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's weird? <laughs> Let me try. It's not bad. Kind of like a... The texture's different. You see why they've been in business for a hundred years. Like I've been saying, garbage is kind of a problem in different countries, especially the plastic. Plastic is a real problem. Check out the card above for Dama Bioplastics. It's come up with a new alternative to plastic. It's 100% plant-based and there's no harmful side effects whatsoever. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we finally found a real step well that you can actually walk down into. It's got water in it and everything. Jodhpur has a pretty impressive step well. Actually, this is probably the coolest step well that we actually got to see. It was neat that the kids were playing and jumping. It basically has turned into the local swimming hole. Ain't no way I would do that. They were trying to get you to do it, remember? Oh, well, I would have. Hello, jump. Jump, jump. No, no, no. Too expensive. Go. I'll, I'll film you. <laughs> <laughs> Local swimming hole. But I don't have bathing suit or anything in that water. That water did not. You're gonna say you would have gone in that water? That water did not look clean. I'd rather go in a, a, a pond for sure. If you're not sure what a step well is, is how they conserve the water when the monsoons come in, and they fill it up and they use it for the rest of the city. Built in the 1740. And it's over 200 feet deep, which is crazy to yeah. think. Yeah, it's made up of red sandstone and has two access levels of water and a separate tank at the bottom. Also used a step well for in ancient India for bathing, saying prayers, meditating. The step well was also a place for religious ceremonies and social gatherings. Well, a couple of things I did like about the step well here in Jodhpur is one, it's free. Two, it had water in it. The other one cost me 300 rupees to get in and it was no water and we couldn't go down in it. I would definitely put this one on your list, but we're still on a mission to find one that has less water in it so we can get that full effect of all the stairs. In a whole art school? Yeah, they teach here how to do the miniature paintings. Uh -huh. And he's a very famous as a lentil man. He paints on a lentil less than one minute. He makes lentil. Yes. Wow. That's so fine. I don't even know that if my camera can even pick that up. Any I like, paint the free colors also that looks more pretty and beautiful. So people have come and visit everywhere to come and see. Yeah. How long have you been painting? Yeah. I'm always at least 30 years, sir. 30 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Even up out of me, right? Many times, like there's still television of India, TF5. Yeah. Television also from Punk. Oh, yeah. And also, like a discovery and stuff and more. And then magazines also. You find online or this even my heritage art schools. Yeah. And I'm the professor. People call me Lentilman because of I draw that. Right, right. And you, you've probably taught a lot of artists at this point. Yeah. I, I, I say it's not even good enough to even hardly do that. I don't know how you do such a good job. Wow, look at that. How many art students do you this teach? 160. A year. From here and my village also. Okay, sure. We teach to other students as well. Sure. So now I can always preserving of this gallery here in the school also. To, because of I help to them, they sell this artwork. Sure. Then seventy percent money go for artisans and thirty percent go to the school for it. That's good because if the school is free, so it should be. Yes. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it. Oh. So he had come also to all world to tourism. What's come to Jodhpur? They come and visit to here. Sure, I can see why. You're definitely a master when it comes to art. Yeah, one day. One day. One day. <laughs> I'm still not feeling complete artist. And I say, sir, you are stop, you are complete artist. No vision. I'm still high. I have a lot of things in my mind. I'm not complete. So I'm not complete artist still. Very well said. Beautiful art too. We suggest taking a ride and a tuk-tuk, but make sure you negotiate the cost with the driver before you get in and take the ride. Anytime you jump in a taxi, a tuk-tuk or whatever, always negotiate up front because if not, you're going to get there and it's going to be a crazy amount of price difference. So always know what you're paying in front. If you want to know what a fair price is, 
use the Uber app. But unfortunately, Uber doesn't work very well here. The drivers try to scam you, double the price, triple the price, and then they never show up when you tell them you're not gonna pay it. It's an interesting experience. Every city in a tuk-tuk is wild. One of these days, I'm gonna buy a tuk-tuk to go across India. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, have fun. <laughs> I'll be in the British Isles. Except for the terrible tuk tuk driver. You stalled it out in the middle of rush hour traffic, which I thought. April's about done with India. <laughs> Today's been a crappy day. I don't feel good. And I've been pushed past my limits with the people being jerks, hustlers, manipulators. It's too noisy, it's too dirty, it's too stinky. The thing with India is, is it can be incredibly a lot, right? Some days it's amazing. The next day you are getting your ass kicked left and right. That's definitely something that you want to do when you're in India is buy a bottle of water. You need to make sure that you hear the seal break every single time. A lot of times people fill it up with tap water because they can get 20 rupees for it. 20 rupees to you is not a lot of money, but for the average person here, 20 rupees is a lot of money. We've gotten out of the chaos. We've come to a nice restaurant called Hello, Cloud. Well, Grab a beer, glass of wine for April. She's going to tell you about her. April's admissions. They were making fun of me when I said my name is April. They were doing the April is a fool thing. April is a fool day. April is a fool day. Hey, April. You're a fool. It's your day. That's because kids are me. Two and a half weeks tomorrow, I am exhausted. I don't even know if that describes it well enough. I am frazzled, I am fatigued, and I am not sitting here trying to sound like I'm complaining. I am just speaking my truth, being real. Today didn't go as we both would have hoped, pushed beyond my limits, the sensory overload, too much noise, the honking horns hurt my ears. Even Wayne has admitted. Oh yeah. No, you said last night that this has kicked your ass. It has. It, so it's there, not just there's me. nothing easy about India. If you yeah. think you're coming to India and you're gonna sit on a beach and sip a mai tai, <laughs> you probably can because it has the richest hotels in well, the world. That's not what you come here for. You come here for the chaos. You come here for the craziness. And I don't mind a little bit of it. And it's interesting the, the and it's fascinating. I am pretty freaking proud of myself, and I hope Wayne's proud of me too because I have pushed and pushed and pushed. I haven't gotten enough sleep. I have felt terribly nauseous and dizzy and sick stomach. I still haven't going. No, she's been the trooper. You will never have experiences that you'll have anywhere else because one minute you're on top of the world, the next minute you're in the garbage and it's smelling and it's stinky oh my and, it, and it's loud and it's annoying. Somebody just tried to scam you, but it's just part of the I know that, right? I know that here, but to process it and to actually experience it, it, it takes a toll on me. I hated the fact that I was sick for the cooking class in Udaipur, but at least we were in a lovely home with a lovely family that were very kind. You get a chance, you know, take a cooking class from a local family that does a cooking school. Even if you're not a cook, you'll still learn. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you will, hit that subscribe button. Share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life.